Hello my friends, it's me again, your favorite denture wearer. I sure hope everybody's doing okay today. I'm up early this morning. My grandnephew is out riding his motorbike. He's having a blast. Uh, we had to fix the front tire on it. We didn't really fix the front tire. We put some slime in it. Because I think we, uh, when we were out at Dell two weeks ago, I think he ran over a bunch of goat heads and those tubes are so thin and those tires are so thin on that little motorbike that I think he ran over some goat heads and it just flattened the tire so uh, we put some slime in it this morning for him and pumped it up and he can ride it now and, and if it goes flat again then my brother's going to go um, get a new tire and tube for it because he went down and bought a brand new tire and tube for the back because it kept going flat and you know the, the tires that come on these little bikes are cheap they're inferior products the tubes are so thin you could poke your fingernail through them so he kept having flat tires on the back so my brother went down and bought a brand new tire and tube for the back and it was like a real motorbike tire and a nice thick tube and so we're probably gonna have to do the same thing with the front and the reason I'm talking about this is because it kind of coincides with when you get your immediate dentures, if you go in to get dentures and the doctor gives you immediate dentures and says after a year they're going to make you a permanent set of dentures. Well, what that means is here's a pair, here's a pair of inferior dentures that aren't going to fit correctly. We're going to have to do soft relines on them. You're going to have to use adhesive. They're not going to be right. They're not going to fit your mouth at all. But you got to wear these for a year and then we'll give you a properly fitting set of dentures. It's kind of like when you buy one of these cheap motorbikes, Chinese motorbikes for a kid to ride, they come with inferior tires and tubes and you have to upgrade to better tires and tubes. Dentures are kind of the same way. You get an inferior set of dentures to begin with that you have to fight with and try to make them fit correctly and get by with them as best you can for the first year before you get your permanent dentures. So, you know, I, I've said before and I'll say it again, I can assimilate just about any subject with dentures. I've been doing it for four and a half years. <laughs> I'm good at it. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm sitting in my office. I've got my little tap, my uh, picture behind me and my fake plant over here um, I like the look of the office this way but the problem is I sit here and stare at the computer and I know I'm in my bedroom I don't like doing a whole lot of work in here on the computer because the simple fact is that it's not really an office this is where I sleep and if I get to the point where I'm working in my bedroom all the time because I did this in in another place I had years ago I was constantly working in my bedroom on my computer and stuff and then when it was time to go to bed I couldn't go to sleep because I was in my office I felt like I was in the office and I should be doing something so it was harder to get to sleep at night but coming in here occasionally and doing things like editing a video I'm editing a video right now for my Bill's Life Like It or Don't channel I've neglected to put up a video this week for my Dentures vs. Food channel simply because I didn't have any corn on the cup and I forgot to buy some. So I will get some corn on the cob next week. I will get that video made and get that up on my Dentures vs. Food channel so that the lessons can continue on that channel. And uh, what else was there? I think that's about it. I think that's about it for today. Uh, but like I said, I can not, I used the wrong word. I said I can assimilate. That's the wrong word. I can associate just about anything with dentures. Before you correct me in the comments, <laughs> I can associate just about anything in life with dentures, just like the little Chinese motorbike. Comes with inferior tires and tubes, and if you want better tires and tubes and you don't want to have to fix flat tires all the time, you have to upgrade. So with your dentures and when you get immediate dentures you have to wait a year and then you can upgrade to permanent dentures now in my case and a lot of cases out there I got a good quality set of dentures right off the bat because they knew this was the only set I was going to get 
and although I didn't have soft relines included in my plan, I did use a ton of adhesive until DentureFit came into my life. And I was using a ton of adhesive at that point, and, but I knew that I was gonna get a hard reline on these and that they would fit better. What I didn't know was that I'm an unusual case and my gums continued to shrink for another year and a half after I did my permanent hard reline at one year. So my gums actually shrank for two and a half years. And thank God for DentureFit because I was using three applicators of DentureFit in my tiny little top denture. Now I only use one, but I was using three. And my denture's small compared to yours, compared to most people out there, my denture's tiny. They had to use a child's tray to take the mold for my dentures a child's tray. That's how small my mouth is. I know you don't think so because I talk all the time. You would think, God, this guy's got a big mouth. <laughs> but no, my, my dentures are actually really small. I even did a video where I measured them out and asked people to put in the comments what theirs measure out to. And mine are widthways from tooth to tooth, center of the tooth to center of the tooth, are about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch smaller than anybody else's. So I have a very small mouth. So for me, using three applicators of denture fit in my top denture, it was almost like I had immediate dentures all over again because my gums continued to shrink. So I was a unique case there. So yeah, I'm still playing with these glasses, trying to get them to fit correctly. I'm still not used to them. I'll be doing that for a while, you know, doing the eyebrow thing and trying to, you know, moving the glasses around, trying to get them to fit, you know. <laughs> Uh, because they're still uncomfortable behind the ears, but, and they're not quite sitting on my nose the way they should. I, I, they'll get comfortable. I'll get used to them. And then I'll quit doing all that, all that playing with the glasses thing. So, you know, and doing this kind of stuff with the nose and, and doing this kind of stuff with the eyebrows and, and doing this kind of stuff with the glasses. <laughs> it's all things that we think about or that we don't think about while we're doing them, unless somebody points them out to us. Uh, just like with our dentures. I've seen people with dentures sitting in a restaurant going like this. Dude, it hasn't been 20 minutes. You need to keep riding that bike so that slime. No, it's still flat. It went flat again? Yeah. Oh, we're screwed. I shared Grandpa. Huh? I shared Grandpa, he said it's probably full of holes. Probably full of holes. The slime's not going to seal. Anyway, I've seen people in restaurants sitting there going. Because they don't realize people can see what they're doing. So some habits that we develop, we need to nip in the bud really quick. I've only had these glasses for two days now, so I need to just learn to just push them up where they belong and stop with all the eyebrow thing and the, and the moving the glasses around and all of that. I just need to push them up like I used to with my plastic frames. Just push them up where they go and, you know, I need to adjust the earpieces a little bit more. They're not quite tight enough. They, it allows the, uh, it allows the glasses to slide down on my nose, but it's a catch 22. It's just like our dentures. It's a catch-22. I want them to be tighter so that they don't slide down my nose, but at the same time, if I make them too tight, they'll blister the back of my ears. So, you know, it's kind of a catch-22. You know, you want them to be tight enough that they don't, you're not pushing them up constantly, but yet you don't want the blisters. And it's the same way with dentures. We want them tight enough to fit well, but if they're too tight, it, they rub and they cause sores because if they're too tight, there's no slack in there for movement. So if they're too tight, they cause sores. So it's kind of a catch-22. It's the same with glasses. If they're too tight, they cause sores. If they're not tight enough, they irritate us. So, you know, we are a, uh, we are a unique species. Um, you never see a cat complaining about their socks being too tight. <laughs> <laughs> God would admit that was funny. Come on. All right, my friends, that's it for today. I hope everybody has an amazing day. I will see you in tomorrow's video. Don't forget to keep smiling, keep trying, and whatever you do, 
never give up. Oh, and by the way, you can get Denture Fit by clicking the little blue link right under this video.